Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go through examples of four different pricing strategies. If you haven't done so already, I recommend you stop the video now and work through these on your own, and then come back to see the solutions. Before we get into the specific parts, let's do the preliminary work of solving for the inverse demand function. We'll take the demand function and solve it for p, so we'll add 2p to both sides, subtract q, and divide both sides by 2, so we'll get p of q equals 20 minus q over 2. We can now double the slope to get the marginal revenue function, so that's going to be 20 minus q, and then we're going to get the marginal cost by taking the derivative of the cost function, and that's going to be 2. We'll use this information as we go forward. Let's start with part A, where we are going to do the basic monopoly pricing. For that, we're going to set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So we're going to get 2 equals 20 minus Q. Solve for Q by adding that to both sides and subtracting 2 from both sides, and we get 18. Plug this into the inverse demand function to get our price. We're going to get P equals 20 minus 18 over 2. 18 over 2 is 9, so we're going to get price of 11. In part B, we are going to do two-part pricing. In two-part pricing, we always set a price equal to marginal cost, which of course is 2. To figure out the quantity sold, we will plug that price into our demand function. So our quantity is going to be 40 minus 2 times 2, which will be 36. The last thing we need to figure out for two-part pricing is what is the fixed fee. The easiest way to do that is to draw a graph. We need to graph our demand function, which has a price intercept of 20 and a quantity intercept of 40. And then we need our marginal cost, which is 2. The quantity is 36. The consumer surplus that we would have with a price of 2 will be the area of this whole triangle here. And to extract all the possible surplus, we're going to set the fixed fee equal to the area of that triangle. So to get the area, we have 1 half base of 36 and a height of 20 minus 2. That comes out to 324. For C, we're going to do block pricing. We know that in block pricing, the exact same number of units will be sold as in two-part pricing. So we already know that the quantity is going to be 36, the socially efficient quantity. The question now is, what is the block price we're going to charge for that? And for that, we need to know what is the consumer's value for 36 units. We can see the value for 36 units on the graph as the area below the demand curve up to a quantity of 36. And that's going to be a trapezoid. It's going to include this area that I've already colored in, but also goes all the way down to the quantity axis. It's going to be this whole thing here. So the block price is going to be an area of the average of the bases. So we've got the longer one here of 20, and the smaller one over here of 2, with a height of 36. Thinking about this trapezoid kind of on its side. What we get is 396. The last part, part D, is the most involved of all four, and that is nonlinear pricing. In nonlinear pricing, we are going to select two quantities, call them Q1 and Q2, which are sold at two different prices, P1 and P2. To sketch this onto the graph, we're going to have Q1 at a price of P1, and Q2 at a price of P2. The way that we go about this is by constructing the profit function, taking two first order conditions, and solving the resulting system of equations. First thing we need to do is write the two prices in terms of the quantities. We use the inverse demand function for that. So for the first one, we have 20 minus Q over 2. And we can see from the graph that for P1, we are at Q1, so we have Q1 over 2. And for P2, we have 20 minus Q1 plus Q2 over 2. 
It's tempting here to just put Q2, but that would not be correct, since P2 corresponds with Q1 plus Q2 here on the graph. I'm going to rewrite this as 20 minus Q1 over 2 minus Q2 over 2, just so that we can take care of that distribution of the minus sign now, and we don't forget about it later. Now we're ready to write our profit function. As always, profit is total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue is going to be our first price times our first quantity plus our second price times our second quantity. Notice here that I've put just a Q2 on the outside because we are selling Q2 units at this second price. Now we subtract 2 times our two quantities, that's our total cost. I'm going to collect terms a little bit. And now we are ready to take the first order conditions. We'll take the partial with respect to Q1, which is 18 minus Q1 minus Q2 over 2 equals 0. And then with respect to Q2, which is 18 minus Q2 minus Q1 over 2 equals 0. All that's left is to solve the system. I'll mark these out as equations 1 and 2 for reference. I'm going to solve equation 1 for Q2. So adding Q2 over 2 to both sides and multiplying both sides by 2, we get 36 minus 2 Q1 equals Q2. And then I'm going to plug that into equation 2. So what we get is 18 minus, now here's where I plug in, 36 minus 2 Q1 minus Q1 over 2 equals 0. Now we have to solve for Q1. And here again, we need to be very careful about distributing this minus sign right here. So we get 18 minus 36, but plus 2Q1 minus Q1 over 2 equals 0. Let's collect terms, and we get negative 18 plus 3 halves Q1 equals 0. Add 18 to both sides. Multiply both sides by 2 thirds, and we get a quantity of 12. Plug that back in to this equation right here, gives us Q2 equals 36 minus 2 times 12, which is also 12. Our final task is to figure out what the two prices are, and we can use our two price equations right here. P1 is 20 minus Q1 over 2 which is 14, P2 is 20 minus Q1 over 2, that's 12 over 2, minus Q2 over 2, which is 8. And that's all there is to it. We have maximized profit under four different pricing strategies. Basic monopoly pricing, two-part pricing, block pricing, and finally, nonlinear pricing. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.